louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roll Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder Gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will
Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> Thank you, guys and gentlemen. You guys can have your seats. Don't take them anywhere. Just have a seat. Um, happy Veterans Day. Yeah. Any veterans in the house? Okay, maybe not. But hey, um, <laughs> maybe not veterans in the house. But in honor of uh, Veterans Day, um, kind of this message goes hand in hand with it. It's something that was on my heart and seeing the things that ta are taking place in the nation, it was something that just kind of spoke out to me that we needed to talk about it. And um, don't worry, it's not that heavy of a thing. I just was thinking of my next thought. Um, it's about character. And there's a lot of definitions to character and like what character means. Um, is someone a character? Is there a cartoon character? You know, things along those lines. What does character mean for us, though, in this nation and in this day and age? And as Christians, what does the word character mean? So, Miriam Webster, and that's not one person, by the way. It's not like a lady. So, in case any of you guys, that's a dictionary. It says, it has a whole bunch of different definitions of it. But the one we're going to focus on tonight says, moral excellence and firmness. So think, think about that. Character means moral excellence and firmness. So when you think of moral excellence, where does that put you? What does that make you think about? Does it make you think about people? Does it make you think about the nation in what we're in right now? Does it make you think about what does it make you think about is the question. I was down there looking for some shots with Uncle Shy and old Willie Robertson. Woo! Yeah. How many of you guys know old Willie Robertson from Duck Dynasty? Yeah, yeah. I think we know him. Yeah, we were down there in the, down in the, the swamp looking for ducks. Did you get any? No, no. I know. Well, I heard this room was full of ducks, though. Oh. That's what I'm doing here. Quack. Quack, quack. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not what we mean by character. It's oh. not like a Duck Dynasty character. Oh. That's not quite what we meant. Oh, not that kind not of character. Not that kind of character at all. Oh. Thank you, though. Thank you, though, Pastor Danny. Wrong, wrong character. Wrong character. Wrong character. Anyway, a little bit wrong on the character there. But what it means, moral excellence and firmness. <laughs> I kind of expect him to come out with a little more flair. So, I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe, maybe if we ever do it again, I'll have to coach him on how to act. Um, what does that mean? So, the common thoughts of today, you hear a lot of people will say things that lead you to realize, if you break down the things that they say, that it's, the term is the means justifies the ends. So what that means is, um, I can do, if I'm trying to accomplish something that I deem is good, no matter what it takes to get it done, is okay. Another way of saying that is that whatever it takes to get something done in what I believe is the better good for myself, for society, for anybody like that. So if, it, if I have to lie, manipulate a situation a little bit, if I have to kind of stretch the truth, because in the end, nobody's really going to get hurt, or if I'm going to, you know, five-finger discount something so I can give my girlfriend something nice, which I'm married, I don't have a girlfriend, but give, give a girlfriend something nice, if it means to, to make someone else happy, we see a lot of that in society. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it kind of hard with it, honestly. We see it with, with even this election, that there were people that were doing things that were not right, but they say that it's okay because we're, bringing, we're kicking someone out of office or we're bringing in something else that is better. And that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit bold, but even in socialism, socialism is absolutely opposed to the gospel. And I'm going to say that very strongly because it's opposed to what the gospel says. 
Socialism has the attitude of this, that whatever it takes to get this done that I consider to be good, then it's okay to get it done. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that your character speaks loudly. And character is what you do when people aren't watching. Character is what you're doing that's not being reported to someone else or someone else doesn't know. That speaks more loudly and that means more to God and to those around you than to what the outcome of it is. So if any of you have ever gotten in trouble with your mom or dad because you did something you weren't supposed to do, sooner or later you're going to find out that if you just come clean sooner, it's usually a little less you know, repercussions. It's not as bad on you than if you try and hide it or you try and lie or you try and kind of stick it to the side. It's because that character of going, hey, you know what? I messed up. I didn't do this right. It means a lot. It stands out a lot. And it's what God talks about. The problem is, who's, who sets the standard of what's right and wrong? Who sets that standard? If we listen to the media nowadays or look at social media, they'll give you all the standards of what's right or wrong. Come on, young lady. Starve yourself so you can be thin. That's not right. Come on, dude. Sell your soul so you can drive the nice thing. So you can roll. That's not right. You know, hurting people in the process. That kind of stuff isn't right. So who sets that standard? I'm going to read. I'm getting to the Bible, believe it or not. Exodus 20, verses 2-17. through 17. It's a little long, but I want us to hear it. We don't hear the Ten Commandments enough. And this just is a standard that we need to realize. This is God's standard for us. I am the Lord your God. That's Exodus 20, verse 2, if you want to look. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And then here's where he goes into the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make to yourself graven images of the likeness of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath. That's not having an idol. Nowadays, we have idols in basketball players, um, in successful business people. It's not having an idol. You will not bow down to serve them, for I, I am the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers or the sins of the fathers unto the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Verse 6, And show mercy to a thousand generations of those who keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you will labor and not do, and do all your work. But on the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord, and you will not work, you will rest. Nor your sons or your daughters, your maidservants, your manservants, your cattle, your strangers within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it, and rested on the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land, and you will enjoy them, what God, give us, what God gives you. Sorry, I'm trying to bring it out of King James. So that's the first promise, by the way. That's one of the first promises in the Bible, that if you obey your mother and father, that God will give you long life and a good life, that it will be a blessed life. Anyway, verse 13, and you, will not, you shall not kill. 14, you shall not commit adultery. 15, you shall not steal. 16, you shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or your neighbor's wife or manservant or maidservant or ox or donkey or anything else that is your neighbor's. So you don't covet their cars. You know why coveting is so bad? Saying, hey man, I want his car. It's not saying I want to get a car like his necessarily, but you become envious and jealous for his car. And I'm just using car as an example. But you, become, you, you let the thought pattern start in your head that I don't care about him, 
I care about his stuff. And if I got a chance to get his stuff, I would get it. And it starts a whole ball of wax. Verse 18, And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise and the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when all the people saw it, they, remo they removed and stood far off. So in other words, when this was brought forth, when the Ten Commandments were brought forth, they were, everybody was in fear and in awe of God. So, with the Ten Commandments, that's a standard that God sets for us to keep. It's from pretty hard... I don't think that's probably the best way to get up to the standard of God. <laughs> well, thank you, Coach Pastor Danny. <laughs> the st so how do we live up to the standard of the Ten Commandments? I'm going to keep it pretty simple. It's not doing three throws all night. So Proverbs 10.9. I'm going to have to get to it here. I had it all preset in my phone, and I hit the forward button, and it went the wrong way. Um, he that walks uprightly walks surely. In other words, st steadfastly. But he that is perverse in his ways will be known. So in other words, another way of saying that, I like the other way I wrote it better. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who walks in his own ways, his ways are crooked and he will be found out. So, if we're going to be found out and we're going to be crooked in our ways for doing things crookedly and it being found out, how do we adjust that? How do we change it? Oh no, here he goes again. Well, although that might work for a moment, a little intimidation, <laughs> I don't think that's it either, Pastor Danny. Thank you, though. <laughs> You're good at cracking whips, though. No wonder Maggio's not here. Poor dude ran home. <laughs> that's not the way. That's not the way we live up to the standard. That's not the way that we make sure that we walk rightly with God. The way we do that is in the following verses. And you have to bear with me because I lost him. Romans 13, 14 says, I like this other version I wrote down earlier better. It says, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. I'm going to say that again. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision to the flesh to fulfill its desires. So what does it mean by put on the Lord Jesus Christ? That's kind of a crazy saying. What it means is, in all that you do, you're going to put your mind on Him. You're going to put it and you're going to keep Him foremost in your thoughts. You're going to think about the old corny adage, what would Jesus do? But it's not so much what would Jesus do, but what would He have me do? How would He have me live? That's how you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I like the second part of this. Is it says, and make no place for the flesh. Make no place for the flesh. It's really easy for us to say, I'm going to do a little of this. I'm going to let my mind go here for a little bit. I'm going to lie just a little bit. I'm going to do that just a little bit. But it says to make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its desires. So if we don't, if we don't let the flesh fulfill its desires, then you have the opportunity to walk with God. And I know that this sounds corny. And, and in this day and age in this society, they're like, 
man, the crazier you are, the better. You know, it's not true always. You can have a crazy attitude with whips or basketballs. But the point of it is, if you want to truly have character and walk rightly and be a person of integrity, you don't want to let your flesh have the room to control you. A lot of times we think, oh, but this is fun. Oh, this will be so much fun. But the problem is those things, we talked about it before when I tied up the two young men, those things trap you. They bind you. They get you. You think you've got control of it, but you lose control so easily. So if we leave no provision for the flesh, then we have the opportunity to walk with God in the midst of it and, and have character and actually enjoy life and enjoy the things that we have not get caught up in them. Amen? And then the next scripture is Romans 12, 1 through 2. Let's see if I can read my own writing. It says, Present yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So our spiritual act of worship is to present ourselves to God, all of us, and I don't mean all of us like all of us in the room. I mean all of us like all of me. You know, my mind, my heart, my soul, my spirit. You know, you can't say, God, I'm going to give you my hands. I'm going to do good works for you, but my mind's going to go somewhere else. It doesn't work like that. Wherever your mind goes, your body goes. So you have to present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And it says, how do you do that? Do not be conformed any longer to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing of your mind is in the Word of God. Sorry, it's a phone, but that's where I have my Bible. The renewing of your mind is getting into the Word of God, is reading it on your own. It's good to come, or if we go to completely being on, on line for church, it's good to, to listen, to listen to what Pastor Danny says, what Pastor Steve says. But you and I have to get into it for ourselves. We have to know what God's Word says because He wants to speak to you and me. He wants to guide us. He wants to lead us. He wants to give us good things. But if you don't seek His face, if you don't read the Bible, and it sounds hard and it sounds horrible, and I'm not saying sit there for eight hours at a time because you probably can wander your mind more. I know I couldn't stand doing that. But the point of it is, on a consistent basis, Get into the Word on a consistent basis. Find yourself reading the Bible so you can hear what God has to say to you. So you can hear what He wants to say to you. Amen? So, next Scripture. 2 Timothy 2.22 It says, Flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and purity along with those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus out of a pure heart. So it says, flee youthful passions and desires. You guys are of an age that, that uh, it's real easy to have a, a desire or a passion for something and you know it's not quite right and you've got to just flee from it. You can't you can't just entertain it. You can't play with it a little. you got to flee from it. Leave it. Get, it, get out, of, out from underneath its hold. Get away from it. That's the, that's the key on, on how to do it. 1 Timothy 6.11 says, But as for you, O man of God, flee these. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. So it says, but for you, O man of God, flee these. So if you guys have, do you guys know much about the books of First and Second Timothy? They were written to Timothy. Makes sense, huh? <laughs> Timothy was a helper of Paul. Paul wrote about a third of the New Testament. He was a missionary that went all over what was the known world at that time. Suffered undue persecution for it, but was a powerful man of God. And Timothy was someone that he discipled. 
was a, was a young man that was underneath him. As a matter of fact, in places, Paul tells Timothy not to let people look down on him because he was young. So he is a young man, and so Paul tells him very clearly, but you, O man of God, flee these. And if you read the verses before it, it's talking about how you used to live, how people used to live in sin, and how the, the uh, perversion of the world around them, of all the Gentiles were. And he says, but you flee this and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and purity along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. I want to talk about this part. So I've, I've kind of hit on, on what we need to do. We need to be in the Word. We need to seek God. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ to keep ourselves. And the point of all of this is, again, to build that character. To have true character. Not to be people who do whatever society says we should be doing or go along with anything that's being told us is okay because the end result is good. Remember, the means don't justify the end. It doesn't matter what the end of it is if you're living a lie, if you're living deceptive, if you're hurting other people to get there, then that's not right. That's not right and that's not righteous in any way, shape, or form. So even if you get it right in your own life and you're going, okay, I got my head on straight. I'm following Christ. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to go where I need to do. No, where I need to go. I'm going to put the Lord Jesus Christ on. But I want to read this verse because I think a lot of you guys are on the right path with that, that you understand this stuff. But it's really easy to have this last piece fall off. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. I'm going to say that again. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. So you can have it right. You can have the right attitude and say, you know what? I'm not going to do these things. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to look at these things. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to, I'm going to live it right. But if you've got Joe... Joe Blow or Duck Dynasty who goes, hey, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's do this. And you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. But you keep hanging out with them. It breaks you down. It wears you down. Time after time, it's going to wear you down. And before you know it, you're going to give in a little and do stuff that you know you don't want to be doing. Go places you know you don't want to go. You're going to let yourself be influenced to do things and go places that you, that you don't want to have happen. And the next thing you know, you no longer have your mind in the right place or have your life in the right place or are living for Christ like you want to. It's really easy for us to let ourselves get pulled astray by society, by people we know. And I want to talk about the society piece because Social media is a huge influencer. And Danny, Pastor Danny has spoken, and I think he did a great series on the influencers, on being an influencer. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. But he talked really well about that. And about are you going to be influenced or are you going to be an influencer? And I think, and it goes the same way with this when it comes to character. Are you going to walk with character or are you going to let people without character lead you down a path that eventually you don't want to go to, that you don't want to be in, that you don't want to find yourself doing the things and saying the things that, that, that you do. You know, we've seen a lot with the riots. <laughs> Pastor Danny was saying 2020 has been crazy. The coronavirus with the riots. We've seen people with the mob mentality, and it's that same thing, that they get swept up in a movement or in, in what they think, and they stop thinking. And they go with what their friends or what their buddies or what other people are pressuring them to do or to say or to think. And because of it, people have been killed in these mobs and in these riots. Good people who had nothing to do with it. 
people who are protecting their stores or protecting their neighborhoods. And it all comes because other people got caught up into something that probably in a in a one on one situation they wouldn't have had anything to do with. You know, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have wanted to be a part of something that led to somebody's death or led to burning somebody's business. But they let themselves get wrapped up with bad character, with, with bad company, and it took their character down. And I want to say, you guys are sons and daughters of Christ. Sons and daughters of God. Co-heirs with Christ. You're better than that. Not that any of you are out there writing. I really hope. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are, come see me afterwards and we will lay hands on you. Um, no, just joking. Um, but the point of it is, a lot of these people wouldn't have found themselves in, or wouldn't have ever thought they'd find themselves in such a situation. If you'd have asked them, even probably a year ago, six months ago, oh, are you going to go out and riot? They'd have been like, no. What are you thinking? Why in the world would I do that? Why would I burn someone's store? Why would I inflict bodily injury? Why would I torch a car? Why would I but yet they find themselves in that situation. And it's really easy to happen. I want to leave you guys with this. You are sons and daughters of God. You have the ability to have the mind of Christ. He's not coming with the whip for me, is he? Oh, you'd have the ability to have the mind of Christ. You have the ability to walk righteously and rightly with God. He gives us he gives us that ability. He gives you that ability to do so. Don't take it lightly. Don't walk away from it. But know that you have the opportunity to walk in good character and to be that example, to be that influencer instead of being influenced. Amen? I told you I'd keep it short. All right. Pastor Dan, you want to... You wanna... Everybody give it up for Warren. You know, we, we, we talk a lot about character. And in fact, on next week, God willing, we'll all be back in this room. Isn't that what Pastor Steve always says, God willing? Is that what he says? God or the Lord willing? Anyway, the Lord willing, we'll be back in this room again on next Wednesday. And we'll continue kind of on that topic We've been in a series called True Story, right? Where we're talking about our identity. And a lot of our identity is, you know, we talk about how it's wrapped up in this and that. And Warren tried to, you know, and did a great job of illustrating using me to illustrate different things, character and working it in. And, you know, how, 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 do, we, how do we grow our character? What's your identity? We've asked you guys over the last couple of weeks. And we'll continue that series. And even if we're not in this room, we'll be online. So I challenge you guys to log in and check it out online next week if, you, if, if we're not here in person. Because we're going to talk about, we're going to continue to talk about character, integrity, and true story. And let's stand to our feet. We'll get ready to close. But before we close, I, I want to ask you guys, we're going we're to have them sing a song. But I'm going to ask you a question before we sing this song. That way, while we're singing this song, you can think about the answer to the question. And like I said, we've been on a series called True Story. And the whole series is about our identity. Who are you? Who am I? I don't know about you, but when I was your age, when I was your age, when I was at Risley Middle School, and then when I was at East High School, I, I used to ask myself, who am I? Where, where do I belong? I, I don't fit in with this crowd, and, and I, I don't really fit in with that crowd, and, and, and I don't really fit in with that crowd. Who am I? Why did God design me, and, and why did God, the, the God of the universe, the, the, the God that spoke the universe into existence? How many of you are familiar with, with the creation story? How many of you are familiar with Genesis, where it says God spoke, and there was God spoke, and there was God spoke, and then... God took time to scoop down out of the earth and not just speak, but to form us. And he made man out of the dust, the Bible says, out of the dirt. And then he breathed his life, his breath, 
into our lungs. That God has a plan and a purpose for you. That God has a reason why you are here. That God, the one that holds it all, the one that's not surprised about pandemics and, you know, economic crashes and depression and suicidal thoughts, that God, he's not surprised by any of that because he knows the state of human of humanity. But I want you guys to think about this as we sing this song. What's my identity? Who am I? And then I'll come back and we'll pray and sing this song.
I, I don't know about you, but that question, it's a tough question to ask, right? Like, like, it's easy to say, who am I? But it's really hard to truly ask it out loud and to think about it because we're afraid of the answer. Because for too long, we've allowed society to tell us who we, we should be. Like Warren was saying, social media. For too long, we've allowed all the negative voices to tell us who we should be. So, so it's hard. I don't know about you, but maybe you're not like me, but for me, that's hard. Because I hear all these voices telling me who I should be and who I shouldn't be. But the only voice that matters is the voice of the Lord. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-warn myself, Jackie, Troy, Crystal, Rochelle, all of the adult leaders, and all of each other. We're going to help each other through this journey called life. And through the power of Christ, we're going to help you guys find your identity. You see, what, what, back in the day, high school used to be called prep school. You know why it was called prep school? Because it was, it was to prepare you for what was next. That's what youth groups is. Youth group is prep group. It's my job, it's the leadership job to prepare you for when you leave mom and dad's house. Right now, you're under a covering. I tell my kids this all the time. You're under our covering. My kids, they, you don't realize. You're under your parents' covering right now. But the moment you walk outside of that, when you, when you enter adulthood and you find your own place or you go off to school, you're out of that covering. And then everybody is, is, is attacking what you believe and who you are and how you grew up. And, oh, you believe that? You're judgmental. You're this. You're that. You're, oh, I can't believe you believe that. And then before you know it, you're like, no, I don't, I don't really believe that because you don't want to be ridiculed or criticized. But I'm gonna, we're going to pray now, and we're going we're gonna to thank God for Warren and his word that he shared with us about character. It was a good word. Please don't ever be those three characters that you saw tonight because uh, I don't ever want to be them either again. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, first and foremost, God. Just thanking you for this opportunity to come together. God, thank you for my brother Warren who stepped up to the plate tonight to share the word with these students, Father God, each and every one of our friends in this room. God, I ask that throughout this week that you would begin to stir it in the hearts and in the souls and in the spirits of these students. Reveal to them daily, Father God, who they are in you and who you are in them. Show them, Father God, like, like David, although they may be only a shepherd boy, that their destiny is to be a king. Show them, Father God, that although they might have been born on this side of town or on that side of town, although they may have been born to parents who left, although they may have been born to parents who aren't there, although it doesn't matter what although they may have been, because you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of them. God, and I ask that you would reveal that to them. Show them, Father God, that their DNA doesn't determine their destiny but that you do show them father god like warren said that good like in the bible says that good co a bad company ruins good character let them know show them who they have to cut from their life because they're dragging them down show them father god they are sons and daughters of the almighty everlasting one and only God. But you call them sons and daughters. Let them know that they are loved by you. Let them know that they are loved by us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We give you all the honor and the glory. And everybody said, amen. Hey, before we get out of here, once again, thanks. Uh, give it up for Warren one more time. And then do me a favor, like Rochelle said, find somebody maybe that you might know from school or whatever. Or even if you see somebody new, give them, you know, we can't give high fives, but give them the uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, URL or whatever, at sign, so that they know how to get a hold of us. Pay attention. We will be um, 
dropping some news over the next couple of days, obviously, about COVID and in person and not in person. So make sure you stay connected, all right? Hey, love you guys. See you Sunday morning, 9 o'clock for our Sunday school class. If not, we'll see you on next Wednesday. If not, we'll see you online. Love you guys. Have a good one. Thank you, worship team.